Hello everyone, welcome back. I have been getting a lot of queries and feedbacks to cover multi-threading concepts in Java. So here we will start with an introduction. Those who are already aware about the basic terminology and life cycle of thread, if you want, you can skip this video. I will recommend you all to watch it once to get the basic idea before we start the coding. This video will be entirely theoretical. From the next video, we will start with actually coding to create and run the threads. So without any further delay, let's start. Now to understand the threads, we first need to start from process. So a process is a task or a group of instructions which are running on a computer. For example, if you want to start Chrome web browser in your Windows computer, then you have to execute chrome.exe process. That process is responsible for making sure that browser is up and running and also able to serve your web requests. A thread on the other hand, we can say a smaller unit of execution which runs within a process. A process can contain one or more threads doing their specific tasks. If we consider Chrome browser as a factory, then threads are like different workers who are working inside it and each of these workers focused on a specific task to make things run smoothly. Now inside a process, we know we can have multiple threads running, like we have main thread that oversees everything and handles the other threads and tasks as well. Then we have network thread, it manages downloading and uploading data and making sure that website is loading properly. Then we also have rendering thread, it takes care of showing or rendering the images, text and buttons on the screen so that you can see the web page properly. Just like these, there can be many more such threads running to keep Chrome browser working as expected. And all of these are running in a single main process. Now please do let me know if this part is clear in the comment section and in case of any doubt, we will try to resolve it. So moving ahead, there are mainly two type of threads that we will be dealing with in Java. The first one is user threads. These are the threads that are created and managed by user level applications. They are often used to perform tasks specific to application functionality. So business logic is getting executed using these threads. They are flexible, but mostly they rely on the underlying operating systems support for thread management. But with the introduction of virtual threads, Java has taken more control over how the multi-threading will work. To learn more about virtual threads, I would recommend you to watch the video from top right corner of your screen or you can check out the Java 21 playlist from my channel. Then we have daemon threads. The daemon threads are background threads that run without blocking the termination of the program. That means if a daemon thread is running and you have initiated the shutdown of your JVM, then this will not impact the JVM shutdown as these are low priority background threads. This will not happen with the user threads. That is if a user thread is running and you have initiated shutdown of your JVM, then JVM will wait gracefully for the user threads to complete their execution. Daemon threads are usually used for the tasks such as garbage collection or other maintenance activities that don't need to complete before the program exits. Now if there is any doubt till this point, please let me know because these are very important concepts and can be asked in the interviews for entry level designations as well. Now moving forward. In Java, threads go through several stages in their life cycle. So understanding these stages can help us manage and control their behavior within the program. So here are different stages of thread life cycle. We have new, runnable, running, blocked and terminated. Now let's see these in detail when the thread will be in a specific state. So when we create a thread object but did not call its start method, at that point thread is in new state. Now to make the thread object ready to run, we need to call its start method. 
So once start method is called on that object, the state changes from new to runnable or ready. Still thread is not in execution till this point, but now it is eligible to be picked up by thread scheduler for the execution. So depending on the priorities and thread scheduler implementation, a runnable thread will start its execution whenever CPU time is allocated to it. And this state is known as running state. This is the state where thread performs its actual functions. That is whatever implementation is written in the overridden run method that will be executed in this state. Now from this state there are three possibilities. A thread can yield and go back to the runnable state and whenever its turn comes back again then it will start running. Second option is to complete the execution and move to the terminated or dead state. From there it can never return back to any other state. Lastly it can call sleep, suspend or wait to move from running to waiting state where it should wait for either specified amount of time like in case of sleep we can specify the time or a resume method is called on that object so if suspend method is called to uh, move that particular thread from running to blocked then to run it again resume method should be called on that and similarly if wait method is called on any thread object then either notify or notify all call should be done to make that particular thread runnable again. And in the end, once that run method execution is complete, then thread moves to the dead or terminated state. A thread can also be terminated when stop method is called from other states as well. Now with this session, I hope you all have the basic understanding of thread and their different lifecycle stages in Java. In the next session, we will see in practice how we can create and run the threads. In case you have any doubt in this session, please let me know in the comment section. If you find this video useful, please don't forget to give us a like and share it with your friends whoever is interested in learning multi-threading in Java. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next session.